Boeing is optimistic that they will fly the MAX's recertification flight before the end of June. And while that indeed would be a positive step towards getting the MAX back in the air, there are many hurdles still ahead for Boeing. However, even if they do manage to get the FAA's blessing, there is still one more bridge between Boeing and the MAX's return to the friendly skies. And unfortunately for Boeing, that bridge may just be a bridge too far. Let's talk about it next on Maximus. As always, before we start, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. And be sure to ring the bell so you can be notified every time we release new content. Okay, so let's assume Boeing and the FAA achieve their goal and fly a MAX certification flight this month. What happens next? Well, at that point, the Federal Aviation Administration, along with international regulators, will meet in what is called a Joint Operations Evaluation Board. The Joint Operations Evaluation Board is made up of representatives from the FAA, Europe, Brazil, and Canadian agencies that will evaluate the next steps to review final training requirements for pilot training on the MAX. You know, the fact that Boeing is now talking about pilot training on the MAX is a bit of sad, tragic irony in the whole MAX saga, because Boeing, and especially Boeing's chief technical pilot at the time, Mark Forkner, who is currently under criminal investigation by the DOJ and the FBI, conspired and lied to world regulators to avoid any additional pilot training on the MAX, out of fear it would cause the plane to be certified as a new type, costing Boeing valuable time that they would lose to Airbus's A320neo. I did an entire video on the subject. I'll post a link down below. Boeing said that Collins Aerospace, who was tasked with manufacturing and programming the MCAS flight software originally, has come up with a fix and together the two have completed updating the software packages. The repair, however, was further hindered when it was discovered during a test flight in February that warning indicators related to the trim system which raises and lowers the plane's nose were malfunctioning. At the time, Boeing told Bloomberg, what is worrisome about this new glitch is that it's a direct result of the fixes we made to the previous MCAS flaws. The system flaw resulted from Boeing's redesign of two flight computers that control the 737 MAX to make them more resilient to failure. According to Boeing, they are in the final stages of cleanup regarding all outstanding software issues. Before the two MAX crashes and the news that Boeing colluded to hide key MCAS information that could have saved both planes from crashing killing 346 people, the FAA's recommendation used to be good enough for the world's regulators to give their blanket approval. However, those days are over for Boeing and the FAA. So regardless of which way the FAA rules on Boeing's MAX return, the world's regulators are going to hold Boeing to a much higher standard than in the past. That is especially true for the EASA, the European Aviation Safety Administration. They will be conducting their own integrated system safety analysis on the 737 MAX and all of its software updates and changes. Additionally, the EASA will be applying a template that has been intended solely for Airbus in the past. That will represent a major problem for Boeing, so much so that industry officials have said that Boeing and the FAA were pretty concerned that the process the EASA would apply to the MAX simply wouldn't work. Officials have remarked that the tension stems from deep philosophical differences between the Boeing and Airbus flight control systems. Airbus aircraft are fly-by-wire and flown via side stick and rely on three angle of attack sensors to accurately interpret flight data. Boeing 737 MAX, on the other hand, still flies with a 50-plus-year-old 1960s pulley and cable mechanically operated flight control system. The Boeing MAX utilizes only two angle of attack sensors. The corrected MCAS software has been reprogrammed to utilize data from both angle of attack sensors instead of just one sensor as was originally designed on the MAX, which led to both deadly crashes. 
The EASA's Executive Director, Patrick Kai, in a September address to the European Parliament, said that the flight control improvements planned by Boeing and Collins Aerospace didn't properly address the angle of attack flight control issues. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration may be the arbiter for Boeing in the United States, but as for the EASA, they are letting it be known that they are not going to simply accept the FAA's recommendations on faith alone as they did the first time around when the MAX was originally certified. The EASA said it strongly favors a design with three independent angle of attack sensors and officials within the FAA and Boeing are concerned that they are not going to convince the Europeans that fewer than three sensors is an acceptable solution. As it stands now, the only other acceptable solution for the EASA will be to install a synthetic airspeed system on the MAX. During the development of the 737 MAX, Boeing engineers discussed installing a version of the synthetic airspeed system such as the one installed on the 787 Dreamliner. However, if at the time Boeing installed the synthetic airspeed system on the 737, that would most assuredly have caused the MAX to be classified as a brand new aircraft type, thus leading to delays, more expenses, and additional pilot training. Boeing had no time for that due to the fact that Airbus was already months if not years ahead of Boeing, on bringing its A320neo to market. So indeed it appears that Boeing is in for an uphill battle with the European regulators. The 737 in its history has never had more than two angle of attack sensors, but it looks like the EASA is going to require three, or demand that Boeing install the synthetic airspeed system to correct the problem. The sad irony in all of this is that if Boeing had simply installed the synthetic airspeed system in the beginning, 346 people would still be alive today. Well, that's all for now. What do you think? Let me know down below. As always, remember to share, like, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and until next time, remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.